This tutorial will demonstrate one example of a way that you can use Google Forms to collect student data. First, a mini lesson on Drive. I have opened up a new tab and I see that Google Drive is an option, so I'm just going to click on it. Now another way to access Drive, if you're using Chrome, is to click on the Apps tab on the far left side of your bookmarks bar. This is going to open a window similar to the one I just saw where I can see Drive. Still another way to access Drive is when you're in another one of your Google Apps, say for example your calendar. The 9 pin that's next to your name will allow you to access Drive. Finally, my favorite and probably the most efficient way, regardless of what browser you're using, is to simply type in drive.google.com. Here you'll be able to log in to your Drive if you're not already logged in and see the same thing we could have just seen in all four of those other ways. Here's a great time to learn by my non-example. Currently, my Drive is a disorganized mess. When I click on the triangle to the left of my Drive, I open up what I like to think of as the drawer and I have all these nice folders created. But I have a lot of things that are not in folders, so I'm going to be sure to create a new folder to put this new set of documents in right away. I like to think of my drive as my filing cabinet. And if I'm looking at my drive, I see that I have a lot of stuff in my filing cabinet. I want to create a folder in the filing cabinet that will help me manage this better. So when I click on new folder, it's going to create a new folder in my filing cabinet or in my drive so that when I scroll down on that left side, I'll see what I called tutorials. If you're using a Mac, you can use either control click or two finger click to have some options with this folder. In this case, I'm going to change the color to make it orange so that it will get my attention. Now, when I click on the orange tutorials folder, I know I'm in that folder because it's red on the left and up at the top it says my drive tutorials. I'm going to create this form in my tutorials folder. So I'm going to click on new in my tutorials folder and click on Google Forms. Now it's important to note that I'm using the new drive so yours may look a little different. Now the first thing you want to do when you create a form is name it. Um, name it something that is meaningful to you, something that you'll be able to remember, something that you'll be able to easily access and that fits the purpose of the form. In this case I'm developing a form so that I can collect for myself my students IEP data. Now the form automatically defaults with a couple of things. If you look up at the top, this wants to require a Billings Public Schools login in order to be able to see the form. Since this is just for me, that probably makes sense. If I want to automatically have it collect my respondents' usernames and email addresses, I can check that as well. And just so you can see what happens when I uncheck this box, it's telling me that if I uncheck it, it will make it open to the public. Again, since this form is just for me, I'm going to leave it as is. At the bottom of my working form, there are a couple of other options I need to decide about. The first is to show a link to submit another response. For the purpose of my form, I want to leave that checked. Again, because this is for me, I don't have a need to publish and show a, a public link to the results, and I don't need to have the option to go back and edit my own responses after submitting. The canned or standard response when someone submits a form that you create is going to say hey, your response has been recorded. But since I'm going to be using this form for my own data collection, I'm going to give myself a message. Good job, self. Back up to the body of my form, the form will automatically default with one question in it. This will be true for every item you add to your form. You're going to have the option to either edit, to duplicate, or to trash an item. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this item so I can make my own. The first item I want to add to my form is just a simple box where I can type in a student's name. So I'm going to click Add Item, and it automatically defaults to a text item. I can easily change this by clicking on the arrow to the right of the box. I've got text, paragraph text, etc. But in this case, text is fine. I want to be able to type in student name. A different option I might actually choose to use here is instead of a text box, make this choose from a list. If I'm a special ed teacher and I'm only working with, say, 10 students all year long, I might want to go ahead and type in under the options the 10 students' names, and that way every time I access my form, I can just choose from that list of students. For now, I'll just leave it as text. I'm going to check the box that makes me mark this as a required question. That way I won't get away with forgetting to put a student's name on the form. 
Now, the next time I go to click Add Item, if I don't click on the arrow, it will automatically default to a text item. Here, I want a different kind of an item. I want paragraph text. I want to be able to copy and paste from the IEP right into this box in the form what the student's IEP goal is. Next, I click the arrow, and in this case, I'm going to choose Date. The date might be the date that I collect a certain piece of data or give a certain assessment. So I'm going to give that item a title, and I'm going to look at the options here. I do want the year, but I don't care about the time. I'll mark this one as required and then move on to my next question. This time, I do want to be able to have a checklist. I want to be able to indicate which test I gave to the students. So I'm going to do choose from a list, and then for my options, I'm going to type in the different assessments I might be giving. This might include Fall SRI, Fall SPI, Fall NWEA Reading, Fall NWEA Language, etc. I can type in as many of these as I want, and when I actually view my form, I'll just get a pull-down list that allows me to select which assessment I've given. One more time, I'm marking my question as required and moving on to my last and final question. At this point, I want to have a place to write some data in. I'm not sure I want it to look quite yet, but I'm going to leave it as paragraph text for now. These are really easy to come back and change later on if I decide that I've titled this wrong or I've chosen the wrong type of question. It's very simple. In this case, I'm going to leave this one optional before I move on and say that I'm finished. At this point, I feel like my form is complete, but I want to see what it looks like before I actually give it to myself or to someone else. So I click on View Live Form, and I get a sample of what I will see when I go to fill this out. I'm going to close this window because what I want to actually do is change the theme. Boring! The new Google Forms has a lot of nice new themes. I love some of the selections that you have. So browse through some of them. You can try them on by clicking them. All you have to do is click on it. It'll give you a sample of what it will look like. If you decide that that's not the one for you, just browse until you find another one. Since I'm doing an IEP data collection form, I think this one, my students are going places, seems fitting. Now I built this form for me. So when I go to access the form, I want to be able to see this form right here. I've got to find a way to be able to easily get that to myself. The easiest way is to make a bookmark. This is easy and it works in any browser. To the left of the address, when I'm looking at the address bar, there's a little icon. In this case, I think it's a lock. All I have to do to create a bookmark is click on that lock, or whatever the symbol is, and drag it down to my bookmarks bar. Now, every time I click on that link, it will bring me to this form. To get rid of a bookmark, like this old one here, I'm simply going to control click or two finger click, which is like a right click on a mouse, and I'm going to say delete. The reason a bookmark is so easy in a form like this is that I can access it from any page I'm on. So I'm going to close these tabs, going to go back to my drive or an open tab. By simply clicking on that bookmark, it will open up my form. Now I can start typing in my student data. Here's Sam. Here's his IEP goal, which actually I'm going to just copy and paste from his actual IEP. I'm going to fill in the date of the assessment that I just gave him. Clicking on the arrow to the right, the date box will bring up a calendar so I can just select today's date. Now here's where my checklist or drop-down menu is going to really come in handy. All I have to do is select the assessment that I gave to Sam and then use the box below to describe the progress toward the goal. Already I'm realizing that that category or that title for the box doesn't really make sense. What I really want is his score for that assessment. Make a note to myself that I'll change that later. All I have to do for now is submit the form. I'll get a nice little note to myself, good job self, and then I click submit another response and go on to another student. Just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go on making up fake students and fake data so that I have some data to show you when I show the spreadsheet. Now to see the results of my data, I need to get back to my drive. Remember, I can type in drive.google.com or however I get there. I'm going to go to my drive, look for my tutorials folder, and now, instead of just the form I created, which I can see by looking at the icon here, I also have an associated spreadsheet. It has the same title, except for it added the word responses at the end. 
A spreadsheet is automatically generated as soon as you start receiving responses on your form. When you open up the spreadsheet, you see the data that has come in as a result of your form. The really useful feature of a spreadsheet is the ability to sort columns. So if you had a whole year's worth of data, you could sort by student, you could sort by assessment, you could sort by date. All you have to do to sort is go to the top of a column, click on the arrow, and then sort the column either A through Z, which would put it least to greatest, or Z through A, which would sort it backwards. You can also type directly into the spreadsheet. So if you have a student whose data is right in front of you and you don't want to bother going to the form itself, you can fill out the data in the spreadsheet directly. This manually added data can be sorted right in with the data that you put in from the form itself. Making use of spreadsheets, and in this case specifically Google Sheets, is a really good way to get a big picture of data. It's right at your fingertips, it's free, it's part of our Google Apps for Education, and it's a great way for you to keep track of information about your class. Add to that the convenience of Google Forms, and you've got a mixture for data success. For more information and ideas on how to get the most out of your classroom technology, visit us at bpstis.org. You'll find lots more resources, just like this one, produced by your Billings Public Schools Technology Integration Specialists.